Greetings scholars, here we're working on section 2.5 quadratic equations. <clears throat> A few learning objectives. In this section you will solve quadratic equations by factoring, solve e quadratic equations by the square root property, solve quadratic equations by completing the square, solve quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. Geraldine's geometric garden. In the outskirts of a small town, farmer Geraldine aimed to maximize her rectangular fields area with 80 meters of fencing. Opting for three sides fenced, aligning with aligning the fourth with her barn, she expressed the scenario as this equation here. Applying the quadratic equation, the area of function she gets is, is as you see. She calculated the vertex, revealing x equal to 20 meters and y equal to 40 meters as the dimensions for maximizing the area. Geraldine's farm became a practical example of, a, of quadratic equations utility approving mass rule and optimizing real world scenarios. So let's look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. Often the easiest method of solving a quadratic equation is factoring. Factoring means finding its expression that can be multiplied together to give uh, the expressions on the side of the equation. So we have the zero product, zero product property and quadratic equations. The zero product property states that if you have two, two or more things that multiply to give a zero, then either the first thing is zero or the second thing is zero, or any other products could be zero, right? For A and B are real numbers or algebraic expressions. A quadratic equation is an equation contain, containing a second degree polynomial. For example, A squared plus BX plus C, right? The highest power is a two. Where A, B, and C are real numbers, and if A is not zero, it's in standard form. So solving quadratics with a leading coefficient on one. Okay, in that quadratic equation, x squared plus x minus six equal to zero, the leading coefficient or the coefficient of x squared is one. We have one method of factoring um, quadratic equations in this form. Given a quadratic equation with a leading coefficient of one, factor it. Find two numbers whose product equals c and whose sum equals b. Use those numbers to write the two factors of the form x plus k or x minus k where k is one of the numbers found in step one. Use the numbers exactly as they are. As they are. In other words, if two numbers are one and negative two, the factors are gonna be x plus one and x minus two. Solve using the zero product property by setting each factor equal to zero and solving for the variable. So here we're asked to solve the, this equation. Okay, so let's give this one a go. So we have, we have this, what, x squared plus x minus six equals zero, All right? So then we wanna, factor this guy into some form like this, where we have x and x. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative six and add to give us one, right? So what is it, uh, two and three? Another thing that we can note is that because the second sign is negative, we know our signs have to be opposite. So one of ours is positive, one is negative. Because the first sign is positive, that means the larger number is positive, right? So then this should be a three and a two. Notice three times negative two is six. Sorry, negative six. Three plus negative two is a positive one. Okay. So now we have two things that multiply to give us zero, and then this is gonna be the case. Basically, we set each factor to zero and solve. So we say x plus three equals zero or x minus two equals zero, x equals negative three, or x equals two, okay? Now we should check this by plugging into the original to make sure that it works. Um, I'm just gonna go with my prepared notes for now. So we got negative three and two. So I think those are good. Okay. Did it access the graph? It, mm, factor and solve, that was it. Negative three and two were the x-intercepts. Solve the quadratic equation by factoring. So again, we're working with this x squared plus eight x plus 15 equal to zero. And again, our goal, we're trying to factor into some form where we have x and x. So now, Notice our second sign is a plus, that means our two signs are the same. If it were a minus, then our signs would have to be opposite. 
With the first sign being plus, that tells us the larger number is, a, is positive, right? So they're the same and the larger is positive, so that means they're both positive. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 15 and add to give us eight, and I think those numbers are five and three. Okay. So by the zero factor property, because we have two things that two or more things that multiply to give us zero, we set each factor to zero and solve. Long story short, we'll get x equals negative five or x equals negative three. Okay. Um, let me just go ahead and do the check over here. negative 5 squared plus 8 times negative 5 plus 15. The question is, does that equal 0? That's a positive 25 minus what, 40 plus 15? Again, does that equal 0? 25, 35, 40, 0 equals 0. So that one checks out. I, um, well, I guess I should just go ahead and do the other one too. Uh, negative 3 squared plus 8 times negative 3 plus 15. Again, the question is, does it equal zero? Nine minus 24 plus 15. Uh, 24 minus 24, zero equals zero. That checks out. Okay. Solve the difference of squares equation using the zero product property. Okay. So we're starting with x squared minus 9 equals 0, right? This can, we can factor this into the following form. Two numbers that multiply to give us 9 and add to give us 0. 3 and 3, right? So this is a special factoring scenario. Something squared minus something squared, x plus three times x minus three. So then x equals plus or minus three. Solving a quadratic equation by factoring when the leading coefficient is not one. When the leading coefficient is not one, we factor a quadratic equation using a method called grouping, which requires four terms. With the equation in standard form, let's review the grouping procedures. With the quadratic in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, multiply a times the c. So sometimes you, you'll see me refer to this as the ac method. I'm saying my a times my c, okay? Find two numbers whose product equals a times c and whose sum equals b, right? So in the previous example, our leading coefficient was a one and we were looking for two numbers that multiplied to give us c and added to give us b. Rea in reality, we were actually doing two numbers that multiplied to give us a times the c. It's just that our a happened to be a one, so you know, it was a lot more difficult to like realize that that's what was going on, right? So it's not really c; it's, it's a times the c, and then two numbers that add to give us b, okay? And then I want to say, I mean, well, there's a little bit more to it, um, but we can we can kind of work with this. Yeah, let's just kind of work it. So use grouping to factor and solve the quadratic equation. So again, before we were, initially we were looking for two numbers that multiplied to give us a nine, but that was when the leading coefficient was a one. Now our leading coefficient is a four. So now we're looking for two numbers that actually multiply to give us a times the C, which is what, 36. So I'm gonna do this in purple off to the side. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 36 and add to give us 15, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through all the factors of 36. Now 36 is what? 9 times 4. So that's 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. All right. So now let's go through all the factors. Uh, 1 and 36, but that adds up to what? 37. So these are not the two numbers that we're looking for. Uh, now if we do 2, notice here, if, we, if we've used the 2, what's left over? 18. 9 times 2? right, is 18. 
but then 18 plus 2 is 20 and we're looking for 15 so we're going to keep going these are not the two numbers that we're looking for okay can we do three yeah we can do three watch so we've used this three what's left over four times three is 12 notice that three plus 12 is 15 and three times 12 is 36 so these are the two numbers that we're looking for right so now I think the way the textbook does it, they do factor by grouping. They rewrite the 15. Um, I'm gonna, instead of factor by grouping, I mean, we still are factor by grouping, but I'm gonna use this technique from this point forward called the box method. Um, and I'm just offering it as something, uh, an alternative, right? So the box method goes something like this. In the upper left-hand corner, we, we do our leading coefficient, with this, which is 4x squared. The bottom right, we do our constant, which is nine. And then on the other diagonal, we're rewriting at 15 using the two numbers that we just found. So uh, we got a three X and a 12 X, okay? So then, for instance, if I look at the two on the top, what's their greatest common factor? They both have what, X? We could factor out an X from both of those terms, right? Okay. If I look at the two on the bottom, what's the greatest common factor? It looks like we can factor out a three for both of those guys. Okay. If I look at the two on the left, what's the greatest common factor? The GCF. They both have what? Four and X. So it looks like we can factor out a four X. Okay. And then the two on the right, greatest common factor looks like it's a three. Looks like we can factor out a three from both of those guys. Right, so if we put those together, our claim is that the original can be factored into 4x plus three times x plus three equal to zero, right? And then, you know, we, we wanna check and make sure that we factor properly if we just FOIL. So first times first gives us 4x, outer times outer is 12 plus three is 15x, and then last times last is nine, okay? So now we can use a zero factor property, two or more things multiply to give a zero. We set each factor to zero and solve. And so then when we do that, x equals negative three by four or negative three. Uh, now let me show, let me showcase an alternative way to check this with my uh, TI-83 plus. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is go to my y equals I'm gonna put 4x squared plus 15x plus nine, okay? And I wanna evaluate it at these these results, right? So I'm just, I had used it earlier, so I'm just recalling what I have from before. But let, let me show how to, how to access that, right? So on the right-hand side of the calculator, there's the button that says clear. Left of the clear button is a button that says V-A-R-S, which is short for variables. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna to go to the right to go to Y variables. I'm gonna click on number one for function, and number one again to call on the function I just typed in. I wanna evaluate this function. Let's do when X is negative three, we should get zero. And then let's also do when X is a negative three by four, we should also get zero. Okay. So we, ch we ended up checking this in the calculator and confirm that both of these values of X make the original function zero. And you can see the results at the towards the bottom of the screen. And those are basically our X intercepts. Solve the equation by factoring, okay. So we're starting with negative 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2x equal to zero, okay? Uh, so first, we wanna find any greatest common factor, any GCF. It looks like we can factor out a negative x from all terms. If we do this, then we're gonna be left with 3x squared plus 5x plus two equals zero. So then we're gonna use the AC method of factoring. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us what? Three times two gives us six. 
which is what? Two times three. We don't have a lot of factors there. And we're gonna, oh, and I think those are the two numbers, right? Two numbers that add up to give us five. So I guess this time I'll showcase factor by grouping instead of the box method. And I think this is the way the book does it. Um, so we'll fact, if we're gonna do factor by grouping, now we could do the box method from here, right? We found two numbers that multiply to give us six and add to give us five. You know, if we did the box, you know, 3x squared would go on the upper left, 2 would go on the bottom right, and then we would put 3x and 2x on the other diagonal. Uh, what we're going to do is rewrite that 5x using these two numbers that we just found. So everything else stays as is. Again, we're rewriting that 5x. Now, I'm intentionally going to put the 3 next to the 3 and the 2 next to the 2 because they, have, they each have something in common. So 5x is going to be rewritten as plus 3x plus 2x. And then everything else stays the same. Okay. So now if we're going to do factor by grouping, I want to consider those first two terms together. What's the greatest common factor of those first two terms? Looks like we can factor out a uh, 3x. So I think we kind of need to do something like this. And what's left over? Looks like it's an x plus 1. So the hint is when we do the other side, we're also looking for another x plus 1. Okay. So what can we factor out of the two terms on the right? Looks like we can factor out a positive 2. Okay, I'm going to work over here. So now we have this what's called the blue part. Notice that they have to be the exact same. At this point, it's called the blue part is called uh, the common binomial factor, right? So we can factor out that blue part from both terms. Again, terms are things that we add and subtract. Factors are things that we multiply and divide. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> sorry. So then, ultimately, the completely factored form is going to be we got this x plus 1, and then what's left over is a 3x plus 2 equal to 0. We have three things that multiply to give us zero, so we we set each thing to zero and solve. Uh, it looks like we're going to get x equals zero, negative one, and then negative two by three. Okay. And I think I'm going to just use my calculator to check it again. That's like the simplest way, in my opinion. Otherwise, you just do it by hand, all right? So we got a negative 3x to the power of 3 minus 5x squared minus 2x, okay? And I'm going to call in the function I just used, or I just typed in, right? So then we first, let's, if, when x is 0, we should get 0, okay? When x is a negative 1, we should get 0. And when x is a negative 2 by 3, we should get 0, right? Okay. So we confirm that these three results make the original function 0. So then we can be positive. We can be confident in, th in these results. Okay. So using the square root property, when there is no linear term in the equation, another method of solving a quadratic is by using the square root property, in which we isolate the x squared term and take the square root number on the other side of the equal sign. Keep in mind that sometimes we may have to manipulate equations to isolate the x squared term so that the square root property can be used. So uh, the square root property with the x squared term isolated, the square root property states that if x squared equals k, then x equals plus or minus the square root of k, where k is a non-zero non real number. Okay, I just want to see this in action. Solve the quadratic using the square root property, right? So we're starting with x squared equals 8. If we take a square root on both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Uh, let me see. Square root of 8 is what? 4 times 2. So the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So this one we're starting with 4x squared plus 1 equal to 7, okay? So if we're going to use the square root property, we can subtract 1 on both sides, 4x squared equal to 6, divide both sides by 4, x squared equals 3 by 2, okay? If we take the square root on both sides, plus or minus the square root of 3 by 2, now usually we don't leave it like this. Like, because this can be rewritten as the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2. Um, let me rationalize it. Let me, let me, let me show, show that. So plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. Uh, and so with that, we, don't, we typically don't leave zeros in the denominator. So we're going to rationalize this by multiplying by 1 in the form of square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Okay. So then on top, we get plus or minus the square root of 6. And on bottom, it looks like we get just 2. And that should be our final result. Plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Okay, so I think I, I put some extra steps in there, which is okay. But we got to the same result. Hmm. So completing the square, not all quadratic equations can be factored or can be solved in their original form using the square root property. In these cases, we may either use a method, we may use a method uh, for solving quadratic equations known as completing the square. Using this method, we add or subtract terms on both sides of the equation until we have a perfect square trinomial on one side of the equal sign. We then apply the square root property to, com to complete the square, the leading coefficient a must equal 1. If it does not, then divide the entire equation by a. Then we can use the following procedure to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll work an example or two where uh, showcasing completing the square. The first, thing, the, main, the first thing in completing the square is that the leading coefficient has to be a 1. If it's not 1, we have to divide all the terms by that leading coefficient. Um, so that we can get one, right? So again, uh, the first, the first step is the leading coefficient has to be a one. Okay. So here's our procedure for completing the square. Given a quadratic equation that cannot be factored, uh, and where the leading coefficient is one, first add or subtract a constant term to the right side of the equal sign. Multiply the b, b term by a half and square it, and then add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equal sign and simplify the right side. The left side of the equation can now be factored as a perfect square, and then use the square root property and solve, right? So we're using inverses, and we're using properties, uh, techniques like adding 0 or multiplying by 1, right, um, in order to change the form of this. Let's just see it in action. We're asked to solve this equation by completing the square. Notice that the leading coefficient is already on one, so we got lucky there, okay? I think if we try to like factor, we can't do it because two numbers that multiply to give us negative five and add to give us negative three, I don't think we have two numbers that behave that way. Well, two uh, integers, you know? So um, again, the leading coefficient is already a one. So we're starting here x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals 0. So we're going to add the constant term to both sides, right? We're going to add 5 to both sides. So then, then we'll get x squared minus 3x equals 5, okay? So now the completing the square step, we're going we're gonna to add uh, b over 2 squared to both sides. So we're going to say plus b over 2 squared and also over here. So this is actually adding zero. Really what we're doing is saying plus b over 2 squared and minus b over 2 squared. And that minus b over 2 squared, we're moving it to the other side, right? So again, plus b over 2 squared, all right? So that's really, we're really, what we're really doing here is adding zero, all right? So we're not changing the answer, we're just changing the form. Our b in this case is the negative 3. So we're going to say plus negative 3 over 2 squared, plus negative 3 over 2 squared, okay? So let's see. On the left, we get what? 9 over 4. 
So there's a 9 over 4 here. This is also a 9 over 4. We got our x squared minus 3x equals 5 plus that. Now, now in this form, um, the left-hand side can be factored. It's a perfect square trinomial, right? So we should be able to factor it into x minus, I think it's 3 over 2 quantity squared, right? If we FOIL it out, we should get the above term. And on the right, um, let me see, 20 over 4, so 29 over 4. Okay. So then, now we can take the square root on both sides. And again, on the right, when we introduce the square root, we do plus or minus. And this cancels this. So now, at this point, we have x minus 3 over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. I just went on and distributed this or took the square root on top and bottom. And then ultimately, we get x equals 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 29, 29 over 2. Okay. Let's see, 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2. So, whenever we're solving a quadratic function, if it can be solved, you can always use either completeness squared or the quadratic formula, all right? So, written in standard form, any quadratic equation can be solved using a quadratic formula, as you see, uh, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not zero. Um, so, one of the ways that, that one of my former students remembers this formula is as follows. The, neg the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical house because he was square, so he missed out on four awesome chicks, and it was all over by 2 a.m. All right, I know it's a little bit not PC, but that was, he said it to me. I was like, man, and it just like, it was like a mini movie, and it instantly stuck in my mind, and so like I've been using it for years, all right? I'm going to showcase it one more time. So the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical house because he was square, so he missed out on four awesome chicks and it was all over by 2 a.m., right? So just an interesting way to remember that. That, that technique for uh, remembering things is called the memory palace technique, right? If you have something that you're trying to remember, if you can associate like different aspects of whatever it is you're trying to remember with like zany images, the more zany the image, the easier it is to remember, right? And so, so then instead of trying to remember all these like random items, uh, you just remember this crazy image. Oh, you're like, oh well, that stands for this letter, and that letter means this, right? So the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical house because he was square and he missed out on four awesome chicks. Like it's like to me, it's like a mini movie. It's like it's like the movie uh, Hangover. That's what it makes me think of every time. All right. So that's that's how I remember that formula. Um, so given a quadratic equation, solve it. How to solve it using the quadratic function formula? Uh, make sure the equation is in standard form. Make note of the values of the coefficients and the constant term a, b, and c, and then substitute each into the formula. Uh, I would use blank parentheses when we do our substitutions to make sure that we can keep track of our signs and then and then solve it. So we're asked here to solve this using a quadratic formula. Also, one of my mentors would say every time you use a formula, write it down. So then, since it's a quadratic function, x equals the negative boy couldn't decide to go to the radical house because it is square. He missed out four awesome chicks. It was all over by 2 a.m. Ooh, I low key want to like, oh, maybe I make that. Maybe I might change the uh, discussion for this week. Hold a mini contest. Who could come up with a better 
an easier way to remember this, like a better story, right? Can you come up with like a more zany, maybe we had some votes or something? That would be nice if I can figure out how to do that. I don't feel like doing it right this second though. <laughs> but anywho, okay, so that's the, that's the quadratic formula. Okay, so we have our quadratic function in standard form, so then we need to note our coefficients. So our A in this case is like it's a one, our B is five, and our C is one. Okay, so then x is going to be equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. Okay, I'm going to keep working over here. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root 25 minus 4. What is that, 21? All over two. Would have been nice if we got a perfect square, let me see. I think that's about the best we can do, right? So these are two results, negative five minus the square root of 21 over two, and negative five plus the square root of 21 over two, okay? We're just gonna go with those results. Okay, and I think the textbook got the same thing. We got 10 slides remaining. So use the quadratic formula to solve, okay. So every time we use a formula, let's write it down. Negative boy, goodness, I'm gonna write it. I was gonna just write on for us some chicks. It was all over by 2 a.m. And this is X, okay. Uh, it looks like our quadratic is already in standard form. So it looks like our a equals one, our B equals one, and our C equals two. So then X should be negative one plus or minus the square root of one squared minus four times one times two all over two, okay? Negative one plus or minus, so one minus eight is negative seven. Right, so this is gonna give us like a complex result, right? Because we we really can't take the square root of a negative. Um, we get we could either say not a real number, or they might want the complex solution, right? Um, uh, let me see. So we get a negative one half plus or minus i times the square root of seven over two, right? They might want it this way, since we've already talked about complex numbers. So then, yeah, I think what we have is good. So the discriminant. A uh, quadratic function not only generates one solution to a quadratic equation, it tells us about the nature of the solutions when we consider the discriminant, or the expression under the radical, the b squared minus four ac. The discriminant tells us whether the solutions are real numbers or complex numbers and how many solutions of each type to expect. Uh, table one relates the value of the discriminant to the solutions of the quadratic equation, right? So here, uh, say your discriminant is zero, there's gonna be one rational solution, it's a double solution. Say your discriminant is positive and a perfect square. So then we're gonna have two rational solutions. Say the discriminant is positive, but not a perfect square. So then we're gonna have two irrational solutions. And if your discriminant is negative, we're gonna have two complex solutions, right? So I think the complex solution is what we got in a previous example. In the first example, we had, uh, our discriminant was positive and not a perfect square, so two irrational solutions. So for, for a quadratic in standard form where A, B, and C are real numbers, the discriminant is the expression under the radical in the quadratic formula, which is the, b squared minus 4ac. It tells us whether the solutions are real numbers or complex numbers and how many solutions of each type to expect, okay? So using the discriminant to find the nature of solutions to a quadratic equation, use the discriminant to find the nature of the solutions to the following quadratics, okay? So the discriminant, uh, let me see. I'm just gonna abbreviate it as discriminant, square root of b squared minus 4ac, right? That's our discriminant. 
So then, for instance, for A, <coughs> let me let me see. Our discriminant is going to be what? Four squared minus four times one times four. So that's going to be it looks like a zero. So then, one real solution. One real solution. It's a double. Double solution. Okay. B. The discriminant should be 14 squared minus 4 times 8 times 3. What is that? 32? 96? I don't know. Uh, but it should be positive. Let me see. Let's use my calculator. Clear. So 14 squared minus 4 times 8 times 3. 100 is a perfect square, right? It's positive and it's a perfect square. So we should get uh, two, two real solutions. Two rational. Let me see. Yeah, two rational solutions. two rational solutions and that first one should be one rational solution okay so then for C the discriminant is going to be 25 um, negative 5 squared Minus 4 times our a is 3 and our c is negative 2. So that's going to be what? 25 plus 8 times 3 is 24. So 49. Square root of 49 is 7. So 49. All right. So it's a, it, should, it looks like it's two rational solutions. Nope, nope. Well, I think I think 49 is... Yeah, no, we're good. 25 plus the 8 times 3 is 24. 49, right? Two rational solutions. Let's, let's work on D. So that's a negative 10 squared minus 4 times 3 times 15. So that's a hundred. Uh, let me see, forty-five. I'm going to use my calculator. It looks like it's a negative result, right? It looks like it's negative. Uh, One hundred minus four times three times fifteen. Negative eighty. So we should get what? Two, two complex solutions. Yeah. Only one we didn't see, unless I did something wrong, was two irrational solutions. One rational, two rational, two rational, two complex. Yeah, looks like we got it proper. Okay, I think I think we're good there. So then the Pythagorean theorem. A renowned mathematician formula, mathematical formula, uh, relates the sides of a right triangle as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. Widely applied in architecture, engineering, sciences, geometry, trigonometry, and algebra, it helps to find a triangle side length when two others are known. Since, since it involves square terms, solving for a side becomes a quadratic equation, and methods learned in this section aid in finding a missing side. All right? Okay. So find the length of the missing side of the right triangle. 
Okay. So uh, for a right triangle, we just said that what? The Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. So we're solving for a squared. B is going to be the other short leg in this case. So it's going to be a four squared equals 12 squared. Okay. A squared plus 16 equals 144. Subtract 16 on both sides. Let's see, 134, 130, 128. So then A is going to equal the square root of 128. Again, normally when we take square root, we do plus or minus. But the minus square root doesn't make sense in the context of the question here because we're doing a distance. Uh, 128, 2 and 64. So then 8 times the square root of 2. Um, Oh, I think I just gave myself some space. I probably realized. I guess I could just delete that one. So 8 times the square root of 2 was good. Oh, we got an extra page in there. Let's delete this one as well. Got it. Can you please just delete that? Whatever. <laughs> it's added pages. Okay. Anywho. Um, all right. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and end the session here. Uh, let me see as far as my current students. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, just be sure that you're doing your discussions to get your attendance credit. And um, so attendance credit. And I'll be updating grades shortly, like probably by like Tuesday. Uh, and then, so attendance credit and be sure to be submitting your assignments in my open math. All right. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace.